Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch, and today Inside Xbox had their live stream about various games, including No Man's Sky, and they had Sean Murray on talking about the Xbox version. Now, the Xbox version is coming out on, I believe they said July 28th, so that'll be after E3, which means that Microsoft will probably have a trailer for the Xbox version of the game at E3. And the Xbox version will ship with Next, which is the latest update that's coming to No Man's Sky. Now, let's talk a little bit about the game, because it's a subject of a lot of contention. There's a lot of haters out there who are just holding on to their hate. There were a lot of haters in the, um, in the live stream chat, just screaming liar when he was on, just, just acting like complete imbeciles. And I, I think I know why that there's so much hate for this game with a lot of people. I think I know why. And it's one of the reasons why Elite Dangerous is dying right now. But next is going to be the uh, next, has next update for No Man's Sky. And it's going to be bigger than any of the previous updates that have been released. And... People underestimate just how big the past three updates for the game were. Now, we got now the first update after the launch of No Man's Sky was the foundation update. That was the beginning of something that they were going to build upon. And that changed the game radically. I mean, radically changed it. Then the Pathfinder update came, and that brought us the ground vehicles. And again, Again, radically altered the game a lot. I, I could not list everything that those updates changed because there's so much. They depreciated certain recipes and created a whole bunch of new ones and introduced a ton of new items to the game and introduced uh, quest systems around building your bases and you could buy you could purchase freighters and they added some new ships and then of course there was the the ground different ground vehicles that you could build so much was added to it and it changed the game a lot the the core game starting on a planet with your ship damaged and you having to collect resources to get your ship up and running again that didn't change much there were some minor differences in this. Some of the minor differences. But that part didn't change much. And, you know, still you being have to, have to go out there and collect minerals and different components to build tech, build up your ship, build up your, your um, multi-tool, and be able to get off a planet and be able to, you know, jump from one star system to another. And even, even being able to follow the Atlas path that didn't change all that much until Atlas Rises. Now, Atlas Rises came later than the other patches did. The other patches, they came about, about six months apart. Atlas Rises took a little longer. And just prior, a few, few months prior to Atlas Rises launching this ARG started. Now, ARGs are nothing new. They've been around for years, and what they are called is alternate reality games. My, uh, Google's had one going for a long time where you, you had this app and you had to go around and scan anomalies in the real world. It was, it was like Pokemon Go before there was Pokemon Go, and people loved the game. And they played it, and there was a whole community around it, and they had live streams about it and everything. But there are these games out there, and there's this company in the UK that, that runs these games. And Hello Games went to them, and they started this, they started this ARG called um, Waking Titan. And it looked like an ordinary ARG, and there were it was very surreal, and there was a lot of puzzles, a lot of numeric puzzles, and complicated 
a um, lot of complicated puzzles in order to get through. And then people started seeing these things that were related to No Man's Sky in it. And they went to the No Man's Sky community and they go, does this belong to you guys? Does this belong to your game? And then a lot of prominent No Man's Sky community leaders in Reddit and on YouTube started getting these audio cassettes from the ARG. And they were labeled as coming from Hello Games. But they were associated with the with the ARG, with the Waking Titan ARG. And they realized, holy crap, this involves No Man's Sky. And after going through uh, a couple of live streams for the ARG and solving a lot of complicated math puzzles and digging around and, and um, you know, check, looking at code in websites, actually looking at the source code, looking at the markup source code for websites and everything, digging for information for this to solve the puzzles. Finally, the Atlas Rises patch came out. The trailer launched and it came out. And that update just significantly changed No Man's Sky from what it was before. It was 90% of the way to what was promised originally back in 2016. It had a form of multiplayer. You couldn't actually see other players as their avatars. They were these little glowing balls floating around, but you could talk to people. You could actually, if you were in their vicinity, you could actually talk to them. As long as there were no more than 16 players in a single area, you could actually talk to them in voice. And if you met up with one another, you could click on each other and uh, a memorial would appear to show, hey, two people met here. And you could leave messages behind. You could leave these message orbs behind for people. And the No Man's Sky community, these hundreds of thousands of players, and people underestimate just how many people actually play this game. These hundreds of thousands of people started building these hubs these community hubs in the game, they would go to these planets and they would set up, they would give out the coordinates for these planets. So they would give out the glyphs for the, um, for, for the stargates or the, the portals that are on the planet, the working portals, because Atlas Rises introduced the working portals. Now, the hubs came about before Atlas Rises. So you had to have the coordinates and there were tools for finding those coordinates in the galaxy or the game. And it was a third party tool for finding those coordinates in the game. But after that, you could use a portal to get to that planet or you could still use the coordinates to get there. And there are there were literally hundreds of pods and there was a, uh, a special event where they brought everybody together to uh, just basically meet up in game and it's just it's brought people together unlike anything else I've ever seen in a video game before it's done some incredible things and not a lot of people know it's happened a lot of people do not know that it was going on you just have a lot of people out there still hating on the game because they either saw the hate from the initial launch and they just hold on to that or they had the game at, at launch, refunded it and never looked back. And when they see people talking about that they're playing the game and enjoying it, they're going, what the hell? That game was terrible. Why? It goes blah, 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 blah. Sean lied, blah, 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 blah. There are these four guys. There are these four guys who are just harassing the hell out of everybody in the Steam discussion page for No Man's Sky. They, they, when you're in Steam and part of the Steam community, you can tell if someone actually owns a game because it'll say when they post a message, 
in a form that is specifically for a game. It will tell you that they actually own it. Well, these four guys don't. And they harass the hell out of people in there. They just constantly go on about Sean lied, Sean lied, Sean lied, blah, 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 blah. And it's the same way everywhere else, except you can't tell whether someone owns the game or not, or actually played it. And I think I know the reason why there was so much hate for the game. Because there's really no justification for the hate. Really no justification for the hate. A lot of stuff has come out recently that suggests my theory that Sony is directly responsible for the game's launch the way it was is because Hello Games was under an exclusivity contract with them. Now, when you're under an exclusivity contract like that with a game company, they can dictate when a game gets launched. And No Man's Sky's hype was huge. Also, if a game is under an exclusivity contract with Sony or a game publisher or a game um, console maker, they're responsible for the marketing. So if you want to blame the hype, all the, the marketing and all the hype on anybody, blame Sony because they paid for all that marketing for advertising the game for the PlayStation 4. They are the ones that paid for all of that advertising. They're responsible for it. Not Hello Games. Sony. They hyped it up with the media. The media hyped it up. Because we know how unscrupulous the mainstream gaming media is. And the players just ate it up. They just ate it up. And the one group of people who ate it up a lot are the same kind of people who are killing Elite Dangerous. I'm going to finally get to that. I'm trying not to ramble here. Trying not to let my ADD get away with me. I'm going to get to that. But... It was definitely Sony's fault why the game came out the way it was. Why the features that were promised weren't in the game in 2016 when the game launched. I have no doubts whatsoever. Sony's, Sony's recent behavior in the past several months, the past half a year, actually the past year, 2017, their behavior. There, there's no doubt whatsoever. No doubt at all that it's their responsibility. It's not the responsibility of Sean Murray. He had a newspaper interview recently. Uh, wasn't New York Times. I forget the newspaper. But he, at one point, he said he felt like he was losing control of the project. Because when you're under those kind of exclusive deals with a console with a hardware maker they're pretty much in control they can pretty much dictate things they say oh we want this change or that change that's pretty standard in those contracts and they can also dictate when the game launches so hello games had no choice but to disable a lot of code a lot of code that was found by rayrod he found a ton of stuff that was unused, some code that was almost done, and he actually reactivates this code for his mods. So a lot of his mods, he's one of the most prolific No Man's Sky modders. A lot of his mods were basically using code that was in the game, code that exists in the game already. He didn't have to do a lot of changes. All you had to do is activate the code that was already there. You can you can do that. And he found tons of stuff that was going to be in the game. 
things that were promised and then some. And these were in, this was in just one game file. And there were several others, and he said there could potentially be more that Hello Games was working on. So they've had a year since Atlas Rises to work on the next update on No Man's Sky Next and the Xbox version, which will include it by default. So they've had a year. If they were able to do all that much within just six months between Foundation, Pathfinder, and Atlas Rises, a year? Holy crap. And in the interview in Inside Xbox, Sean Murray said that they had multiplayer working for six they had multiplayer working for six months. And they've had a year. So so six months after development of the next update, they had multiplayer working. And it's been working ever since. So they've been working on other stuff along with it. So there's no telling what they could have added to this game. I know based on what he said, there will be PvP. And that will get into what I'm... My final thought into it here. And there will be um, base building to be able to build bases with your friends. Uh, no word on how many people can be in a... Whether you can form a group or... Uh, whether you can form a group or a party in the game, so to speak, probably can. Um, if likely, there will be still voice chat because Alice Rises had voice chat, so they could easily incorporate that. But they've had a year, and they had multiplayer, full multi, full multiplayer working for six months. So. Yeah, this this is going to be a very big update. So, getting into what I was had talked about before about who the haters are, why they hate No Man's Sky, and why I say it involves the people. Who are killing Elite Dangerous right now. Elite Dangerous is a game I live stream on my channel, Zort Central. And it's a space, it's supposed to be a space sim. There's very little sim to the space sim, actually. But it's, you know, you can trade, you can be a bounty hunter, you can be a pirate, you can go mining. But the game is very heavily focused on PvP very heavily focused on pvp most most everything is focused on it that's the most fleshed out part of the game is the player versus player the combat the rest of it is not very well thought out i mean you can explore you can go out there into deep space and and be somewhat self-sufficient you have to stop at a station every so often to do repairs to your ship you can repair um most components equipment exists in the game that will let you repair your you know your internal components and you also have you can also make limpets which will repair your hull but uh, then there's your your um, ship integrity which is sort of your damage resistance you can't repair that unless you go to a station and you can carry a fuel scoop to refuel your ship at a star so you can be mostly, you can be, you know, 99, 90, I'd say 90% self-sufficient out there in the galaxy. You can even replenish um, most of your ammo by just mining up materials uh, from, from asteroids or from um, the material in planetary rings and everything in, in the game. But what's hurting it the most, what's hurting it the most is the rather toxic community in the game who are very vocal and have Frontier Development's ear right now. 
And those are the ones that like playing PvP. Those are the ones who like going out there and just shooting up people randomly. And that's the big contention in the game. You see, there there are uh, three different ways you can play Elite Dangerous. You can play solo in the game, just by yourself with NPCs. There, you can play in a private group. You can create a private group, or you can join a private group. I'm part of Mobius. And then there's open. And open play is just like Destiny 2 or like an MMO where you're playing the game with everyone else in the game. Where you where most other players you will encounter most other ships you will encounter will be other players. There is that many playing. The majority of those who play in open are the gankers, the player killers. Now there are there are people out there who legitimately want to play the game, but the player killers are in sufficient number that they are causing issues for everyone else. They're causing problems for everyone else. And recently, Frontier Developments has made some announcements about some of the changes that are coming to the game, and they're going to do something that they said that they would never do. And that is remove a feature from one of the game modes. They're going to move power play off of solo play. Because whether you're playing solo or in a private group, you are still a part of the background simulation of the game. That's a, simulation is a loose term for Elite Dangerous. But you can still influence the universe even for people who are playing in open if you're playing in solo. Like you can affect a, a, a private group of sufficient size can affect whether or not a faction a player faction in open tries to take control of a system or not and there's been complaints about that and the same thing goes with open you can affect the outcome of you can affect the outcome of of a power play by playing solo you can play the outcome of, you can affect the outcome of the open play players in solo or in a private group. And so they're removing power play from solo. And it's a step that they said they would never do. And that opened the door to them removing it from private groups and removing other elements from the game for solo and open play. And... Frontier Developments wants people to play in open. They've been trying hard to get people to stop grouping up in these in these large groups. They have not tried to they have not tried to shrink the size of private groups or even get rid of them altogether because they know if they did that, they would definitely kill the game. Their large portion of their player base would disappear. So they're doing it slowly, but I think they're 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 starting to get a little desperate because people are getting tired of them not listening, them not giving them what they give, not giving them what they want and what they need, or more more than anything, they're tired of frontier developments catering to the griefers because. Most everything they've done caters to the PvPers. Most everything they've done caters to them. All the new weapons and, and everything that goes into the game caters to them. They introduced this new crime and punishment system that was going to be really good at punishing people who killed other players. Well, they made it toothless. They might as well have not introduced it. You know, they... they, they took this older system out that was that punished the players the punished the, the non PvP players more for making minor mistakes they took that out and introduced this new system that was supposed to punish the um, the gankers more 
and they made it utterly toothless. They made it utterly worthless. It's not, it's not really, it's no deterrent at all. And now they're doing this with power play. And it's hurting the game. And they're going to be doing... Uh, who knows what they're going to be doing next. Especially with exploration and everything else that they say is going to be coming this year. And the game's been out since... I think the Kickstarter was originally in 2012, so it's been around for a long time. And the amount of development that Elite Dangerous has gotten is small in comparison to the amount of development that No Man's Sky has gotten. It's like minuscule how much new content, how much, how many how much changes were brought to the game because there was a paid expansion for Elite Dangerous, the Horizons update that give you planetary landings. When you get down there, there's nothing to do except shoot rocks and drive around through empty landscapes. There's not even life forms. There is no plant. There's no atmospheric landings. You just land on a planet that's just barren rock and nothing else. And you shoot rocks and maybe occasionally shoot a few skimmers to get uh, the bounty for them and to collect resources from them when you when you destroy them. That's it. That's the extent of Horizons. And it was a $30 expansion to a $60 game. And people are hating on Sean Murray. And then there's Randy Pitchford. And he blatantly lied to players with Aliens Colonial Marines. You know that, that whole demo they did at E3 saying, oh, this was going to be in the game. How the game was going to be. And then when the game shipped, it was absolutely nothing like that. And he, he absolutely lied about it. And then after the fact, he blew people off and... And, you know, he did not handle the criticism very well at all. Where's the torches and pitchforks for him? Where's all the, the, the righteous hate for him that we see for Sean Murray? Where is it? Where is it? I don't see it. Why aren't they hating on him? You know, I, Why? I don't get it. I just don't get it. Actually, I do. I do. Because I think I know why there's so much hate for Sean Murray. And it stems again to the problem with Elite Dangerous. You see, the gankers are emboldened by Frontier Developments because they're basically catering to them basically giving them everything that they've wanted and they're not doing anything to curtail their activities they had the law they had the crime and punishment system and it's toothless and they're not really listening to their community not really listening to their players to the to the majority of the players who want to just play the game who want to enjoy the game and the people who want a chilled experience of exploration in the galaxy they're not listening to them. The difference is... The difference is... Hello Games is listening to their community. Multiplayer was a feature that was not going to originally be in the game. But because the players wanted it, Hello Games is adding it. In fact, they started adding it with Atlas Rises, and it's going to be in the game with the um, next update. Oh, well, now, finally, I am going to get to the part that I was going to get to at the end. Why people hate on, no, hate on Sean Murray. Why? It's the people who want to be gankers. 
It's the people that are hurting really dangerous. Because the game didn't have multiplayer and didn't have PvP out of the gate, they were looking for another game to be haters in. To be that guy that would go around and ganking other people. If you take a look at the people, when I mentioned those four guys in the um, Steam forum for the game, those four guys that are constantly harassing people and saying Sean lies, blah, blah, blah. If you look at their profiles on Steam, they all play CSGO and Call of Duty. All of them. They're those kinds of guys. They wanted PvP. They wanted multiplayer. They wanted PvP. They wanted to be able to go out there and shoot people. And if, if it's true for these four people, then it's likely true for the rest of them. For a lot of the other people. Because I've wrangled with a, a few of the haters out there. And the way they way they talk, the way they act is the exact same way a lot of Call of Duty players and a lot of CSGO players, a lot of, a lot of players who play first-person shooters all act. The way they talk, their attitude, their, their, their really deeply negative attitude, it's all the same. So that's who the haters are. The haters of No Man's Sky are the people who wanted to be able to go out and just basically blindly kill people in the game. And because it didn't have that, they now religiously hate Sean Murray. Now, it may not be all of them that are like that, but the majority of them are because it didn't have multiplayer and PvP in the beginning. Hey, Shut up, Navi. So, that's why. That is why. I've been Mike DeZorch. Hush. I've been Mike DeZorch. Thanks for watching, listening to my rant. I'll see you guys next time.